Beauty and the Beast. Once upon a time, there was a merchant who had three beautiful daughters. The eldest sisters cared only for fine dresses and jewels, but the youngest, called Beauty, had a kind and gentle heart, and was especially loved by her father. One day. The merchant was going off on a long journey, and he asked his daughters what they would like him to bring home. "I'd like a fine emerald necklace," said the eldest. "And a pearl necklace for me," cried the second. "I would like you to bring yourself home as soon as possible," said Beauty. And if you can find one, I would like a white rose. The two sisters made fun of Beauty for asking their father to bring her a rose. You have lots of roses in your garden, they said. But I do not have a white one, said Beauty, and she wondered why they wanted jewels. The merchant did not forget his daughter's wishes, and before returning home, he bought an emerald necklace and a pearl necklace. But nowhere could he find a white rose for Beauty, for it was winter, and snow was falling. As he was nearing home, the merchant missed his way in the snowstorm, and could not tell where he was. Just as he was about to turn round, he saw lights ahead, and soon found himself at the door of a great castle. He hoped that they would offer him shelter for the night, but as he went to knock on the door, he saw that it was open. Not a servant was inside, so he went inside. In the great hall. He found a splendid supper laid out. He sat down and enjoyed the feast. In the corner of the hall was an open door, and when he looked in, he saw a bedroom that looked as if it had been prepared for him. The merchant was very tired, so he went to bed and slept soundly. In the morning, a fine suit had been laid out for him to wear, and a hearty breakfast awaited him in the hall. He would have liked to thank his kind host, but still, the merchant saw no one. As he walked through the garden on his way to the stable to collect his horse, he spied a beautiful rose bush. Covered with white blooms. Thinking of his daughter and her request, he reached out and picked a single rose. Suddenly, a terrible row sounded from the bushes, and the huge, ugly beast sprang out. "Who is stealing my white rose?" he growled. The poor merchant trembled. And could barely speak. I did not mean to steal. My daughter has begged me for a white rose, and this is the only one I have seen. It is my favorite rose, and anyone who touches it must die," said the beast. "But I will let you go if you promise to bring me the." First thing that runs to meet you when you get home. The merchant agreed, and as he made his journey home, he hoped that it might be the cat that came out to meet him, and not his beloved dog. But as he approached the house, it was his little daughter, Beauty, who came running towards him. He turned so pale that when she saw her father, Beauty thought he must be very sick. 
he gave her the white rose, and took her hand. He told her all that had happened to him, and the promise he had made to the beast. But, I will never, never give you up, Beauty. He said. You must keep your promise, Father," said Beauty. "Perhaps he will not hurt me." So they prepared to return to the castle. They rode silently through the forest, for they were too sad to speak. At the castle, they found the front door open, and a meal laid out in the great hall. Only this time, the table was set for two. They sat down, but Beauty and her father could not eat. Then, at nine o'clock, they heard a great row, and the beast appeared. He spoke gently to them, saying to the merchant, "You may stay here tonight, but tomorrow." You must go home and leave Beauty behind. Do not worry about her; she will have all she could wish for here. Father and daughter parted with great sadness, but Beauty soon became quite contented with her life in the castle. Her room was very pretty, with roses outside her window. And on a table stood a wonderful mirror. In golden letters around the outside was written, "See your wishes, here enshrined. What you long for, you will find." I will be able to wish myself home whenever I am unhappy," said Beauty to herself. And she often looked into the mirror to see what was happening to her father and sisters at home, for she spent every day amusing herself, and saw no one until the evening, when the beast joined her for supper. After they had eaten, Beauty would sing to the beast. One night, he asked her. Do you think I am very ugly? His voice sounded so sad that Beauty found it hard to answer him. You have a very kind face, she said at last with a sigh. But you really are very ugly. A single tear ran down the beast's cheek. And Beauty felt so sorry for him. I do like you very much, she assured him. Then, will you marry me, Beauty? Oh no, I could never marry a beast. Sobbed Beauty. She went to bed very sad, and looking into the magic mirror, she asked to see her family again. The mirror painted a picture of her old home, and in the corner, Beauty saw her dear father lying ill in bed. Next day, Beauty could neither play nor work, and could only wait until supper time came, when she could ask the beast if he would let her go home for just one week to visit her father. If you go, you will never come back to me," said the beast. "I promise you, I will come back in a week, dear beast. Let me go," pleaded Beauty. "Very well," he said. "But take this ring with you, and if you ever want to come back." Put it on your finger when you go to bed, and in the morning, you will find yourself here in your own room. That night, Beauty looked into the magic mirror and wished herself home. 
she fell asleep on her bed, tightly clutching the ring. And when she woke, she was in her father's house. He wept with joy to see his little beauty again, and began to get well. At the end of one week, Beauty could not bear to leave her father, so she broke her promise to the beast, and stayed another week. One night, she had a strange dream. She dreamed that she was back in the beast's garden, wandering about. As she came to the white rose bush, she found the poor beast lying on the ground, and he looked as if he were dying. As she ran towards him, he cried out, "Oh, beauty, you have broken my heart." And I shall die without you. Beauty woke up from her dream, and so longed to see her dear beast again, that she reached out for the magic ring, and slipped it onto her finger. When she next awoke, she found herself back in her pretty room in the beast's castle. Just as he had told her she would. Remembering her dream, Beauty quickly ran out into the garden to see if he was there. When she reached the white rose bush, she found the beast lying so stiff and quiet that she thought he was dead. Oh, my dear beast! Cried Beauty, as she threw her arms around his neck. Please, don't die, for I have come back to take care of you, and I will marry you, for I love you with all my heart. She put her head in her hands and wept, and when she stood up, she could not see the beast. Instead. Through the tears, she could only see a handsome young prince beside her. Who are you, and what have you done with my beast? Asked Beauty. Do you not know me, dear Beauty? Said the prince. I am the beast you loved, and to whom you give life and happiness. A witch cast an evil spell over me, so that I took a form of an ugly beast, and nothing could set me free until a beautiful girl loved me and promised to marry me. If you really are my dear beast, then I will marry you," said Beauty. Together they went to the magic mirror, and when Beauty looked in. She saw her father living for the rest of his days in the castle with her. When the prince looked in the mirror, he saw a wedding. With beauty, his bride carrying a bouquet of white roses. Their wishes came true, and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. This is from your story fairies. Have a good night, sweet dreams.